Convection enhanced delivery is actually a very new technique in which you can put catheters inside the tumour and then with a very slow uh, infusion rate infuse drugs really at the spot where they need to be in the tumour because we think that a lot of brain tumours in children have the well disadvantage that the blood-brain barrier which is actually sort of a barrier between the blood and the brain as the word says is preventing a lot of drugs from entering the tumours so that's why we think that convection enhanced delivery might give an, an advantage in treating these children. Convection in a way just means that you put a catheter somewhere and slowly infuse. So that can also be in metastases, for example in liver metastases or something, but we specifically focus on the brain of course. Uh, it means that not all tumours are suitable because you need tumours that are diffusely infiltrating brain tissue. Um, and that's exactly the, the spot where you can put catheters in. So when, for example, the tumour is, is inside uh, the ventricle, for example, then it's very difficult to infuse because all the infusate goes through the ventricles and does not reach the tumour itself. So, for example, a diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma is a actually excellent candidate for convection enhanced delivery because it's located in the brainstem, which is really a sort of a compartment in which you can infuse at multi from multiple angles and completely fill up the tumour. All brain tumours are actually uncommon if, you've, if you compare them to adult patients, but for DIPG, about, I think in the UK, about 40 patients a year, and in Europe, about 400 children per year get a DIPG. And it, it's, a, it's a brain tumour which, for which we do not have a, a treatment that cures these children. So almost all children die within two years. So there is a clear need that we develop new, innovative treatments for these children. The advantages, I think, are clear because you, you put drugs straight in the, in the brainstem. The disadvantages of the technique are that not all drugs are suitable because also normal cells are located, of course, in the brainstem. And also normal cells can react to these drugs. So not every drug, you can translate it. And there are also certain properties of the drugs, for example, charge, uh, lipophilicity, um, how big they are, that might influence whether you are able to put these drugs in a catheter and put them in the brainstem. So there are limitations to the technique. There have been multiple adult studies um, in uh, patients with glioblastoma multiforme. So these are tumors that are not located in the brainstem in adults, but in the, in the large brain. In the, uh, um, and in these patients, actually multiple studies have showed some survival benefit. But um, uh, these were small studies and uh, larger studies have not yet been performed in these patients. Because this is really a new technique. But it's difficult because I think DIPG is dif different from adult uh, cancers. Um, but as I just said, also the location can make it even more suitable for CED. So it might be that these patients uh, benefit from it even more than the adults. Well, I'm not a neurosurgeon, so this is actually a question for a neurosurgeon. Um, I think the Bristol group are quite far in, in developing this technique. Also in the US there are, are some uh, groups that study DIPG and uh, convection enhanced delivery. Um, These children need a surgery um, and catheters are, are put in um, and that is via the transcerebellar route, so via the small brain and also via the transfrontal route, so that's via the large brain. Um, and the Bristol group has a unique um, technique in which they have a definitive system which they implant and, which, and there's a small portal behind the ear of the child which they can use every four weeks. So I think this is really a big step um, in new techniques for this disease. Well, in Amsterdam we, uh, we do a lot of research in mice models. We've established mouse models from uh, children that were biopsied or children who had had an autopsy when they died and we uh, got material, tumor material, and we were able to create a lot of different mice uh, that have brainstem tumors. And we can also use this technique, so the li really little catheters in mice brains, to study what the effects are. And these are, have been really promising. We've, we've studied some drugs already and we plan to move them forward in a trial, maybe in collaboration with Bristol, that's what we hope, in the very near future. 
That's still very difficult to say because you can look at the properties of the drug itself, but that does not mean that uh, you have to uh, test it in animal models. And it's still too early, I think, to, to give you a list at this moment. Well, I think the, the big take home message is that we need to think out of the box and think of new technologies. And I think new technology will give us answers and will ultimately cure these children, I think. Maybe that's, these are big words, but I'm, I'm definitely very hopeful.